All right, welcome back to Pack West Bigfoot. This is David, and uh, real quick, want to just let you guys know that this month's free giveaway is pretty awesome. If you have not signed up yet for the clan and for the free giveaways, it's at packwestbigfoot.com. This month, I'm going to be giving away uh, a really awesome book here. It's a Young Researcher's Guide to Bigfoot by Gail Beatty and Deborah Ray. Uh, so uh, keep an eye out for that. We'll be announcing that right around the 20th of the month, which I do every month around the 20th. Also, uh, wanted to let you guys know that I'm going to be giving away something else. Uh, so there's going to be two giveaways this month. Another one is an actual t-shirt from mypackwestbigfoot.com. So just put a my in front of the packwestbigfoot.com and you guys could, I know many of you guys have been asking me for a long time for some t-shirts or hoodies and, <clears throat> you know, coffee mugs and whatnot. And guess what? Finally got it put together. <laughs> so there it is. Um. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is instead of uh, doing donations to keep the uh, uh, everything going here, I'm just going to go ahead and let the store take over the donations part of everything. So if you guys feel like donating, get yourself a t-shirt, get yourself a hat, get yourself a coffee mug, whatever you want to grab. It's over at mypackwestbigfoot.com. Okay? I will only mention that, uh, you know, once a week, very shortly, um, and that is it. So with that. Let's get into this week's encounter story from the beautiful Pacific Northwest. Bigfoot follows two teenagers, the Bone River Stickman. My parents gave me permission to share this with you uh, about two years ago near the Bone River Natural Preserve. My girlfriend and I were followed by a Bigfoot, or otherwise known as the Bone River Stickman. My mom and dad told me of the legendary stick man, or Bigfoot, that lurked in the woods and mountains surrounding the preserve. But that is all it ever is, right? A legend? <coughs> so here's what happened. Feel free to fill in the gaps with scenery, Dave. By the way, my dad and I love the encounters. Bone River Stick Man. I am 17 and I will actually be 18 before you publish this encounter story, but it took place when I had just turned 16, and yes, my mom and dad let me date a girl to even my surprise back then. <clears throat> Being the son of a pastor, dating you would think was, and I quote, against the rules, but that is not really true. As a matter of fact, my girlfriend's parents also agreed it was okay as long as date nights and study times were, for the most part, shadowed. However, I do not think this type of shadowed date was what they meant, and by that I mean being followed or shadowed by a Bigfoot. Like I said, she and I were dating, and we decided to go on one of our favorite things, uh, favorite dates, uh, get out into creation for some hiking and photography. Personally, I love baseball, Phil Wickman and the outdoors, and my girlfriend, well, she loves soccer, nature photography, and Danny Gokey. We had and still have a ton in common, including the fact we are still dating today. She is a great photographer, and two years ago she got the bug for it and decided we should go on a hike around the outskirts of the preserve, the Bone River Preserve, for a date and picture taking and hiking. The parents okayed it, <clears throat> so one late Saturday afternoon her folks drove us up to the preserve and decided to do a little nature hike themselves. They trusted us to be on our own and they had no reason not to. We were waiting and still are for marriage when it comes to, you know, that stuff. Sounds crazy today, I know, but we are. We parked and everyone went their own way. We had been told of the old legend of the Bone River Stickman many times growing up and the elusive Bigfoot that roamed there, the area. The local Native Americans and others here shared the stories over the years with locals too, here and there. It was a spooky tale, but one that never turned into anything blood-curdling in any way. But there were a few, I remember, that were rather gruesome about its hunting habits. One story was of the time it took the deer of two Native American Indians who were hunting back around the turn of the last century, I believe. The story goes they tried to get it back and they lost the fight and one of them lost their life uh, days later after the injuries they received they had eventually succumbed to. Why they did that, why they tried to fight this thing, well, nobody really told that part of the story. 
Fact is, the locals say the Bone River stick man was and is to be left alone at all costs. A picture is worth a thousand. What? Her parents went straight through the large open meadow, whereas my girlfriend and I decided we would stick to what was and is today a little trail that encircles the whole preserve. So, with her backpack full of camera equipment, mine full of a late lunch or snack, and bottled water, we headed out down the trail. This trail, for the most part, ran just inside the tree line, but you could plainly see the vast open area to the left as we walked along. I have to say, it was the second we hit the trail that I felt a little, <clears throat> well, a little off, like something was not right. It was not a feeling of dread, like some... I have heard speak about when encountering such a creature or animal, but I felt, well, more aware, if you will. I mentioned it to my girlfriend, and she kind of laughed it off half-heartedly. At the time, I think she was focused on picture-taking, and nothing else was on her mind. We traveled about a hundred yards up the trail when she decided to take a few pictures through the trees and into the open area, hoping to get some cool pictures of the light coming through the trees. Like I said, she had a real knack for taking pictures. I was still feeling off, almost to an uncomfortable point, but I did not want to ruin her picture-taking with my feelings. Besides, I thought at the time it was probably nothing more than a bear or cougar possibly passing nearby. As she snapped more and more pics, I kept looking around and keeping up with the conversation at hand we were having between snaps. The conversation that day was about the youth group trip to Mexico we would be taking in a couple months. So far, we were both going, and of course, our fathers. She kept taking pics, and I kept talking, hoping that weirdness I was feeling would leave. Actually, it got worse, for an apparent reason, the Bone River stick man. Clicking, or clacking. We had started back down the trail, and the feeling got worse. It started turning into a real worry. And just as it did, we both heard what sounded like clicking or clacking, maybe. Like tongue-in-cheek or two rocks. We could not make, out exactly, make it out exactly, but it was a click or a clack we were hearing for sure. It came from the right of us, <clears throat> from the woods. We could not make out exactly where, but the general direction was southeast. And it seemed to be uh, about 40 yards or less away by the sound of it. It was repeating every few seconds or so. There would come three distinct clicking or clacking sounds. The more we listened to it, the more it started sounding like rocks clacking together, to be honest. What clacks rocks together, we asked ourselves. People. That was the simple answer. I have heard of certain forest people living out here in the wilds of Washington State, and perhaps we've come across them, we thought for a moment. Our conclusion seemed right on the spot all of a sudden when we both heard what sounded like bipedal walking through the brush, and nearly the forty yards or so we estimated the sound to be coming from. A person? I remember my girlfriend asking me in a statement in question kind of way. <coughs> I agreed it had to be people. Heavy people because of the sound of the footfall. Or a big person. But a person nonetheless. We started praying a bit under our breath that we would sim they would simply leave us alone, and for a few minutes or so it seemed they did. Tall, dark, shadow. <coughs> we kept walking, but this time we stayed near the trail, but not exactly on it. We decided to stay closer to the edge of the trees that opened to the meadow beyond and less close to the thick brush and trees. It was a few minutes or so since we heard anything, so with our guards dropping, <clears throat> my girlfriend went back to taking pics, this time a little more of the macro photography she also enjoyed. <clears throat> At one point she was taking some pics of, tr of, tree tr of a tree trunk up close when I noticed something moving slightly in the background of the forest. Whatever, whoever, whomever it was, was standing erect, on two legs I mean, swaying back and forth. I cannot tell if the person was or not other if it was a person or not other than the fact that I could clearly tell it was a human shape from the waist up. It slowly moved back and forth, this tall shadow of a thing or person. My mind started spinning, and I started feeling really uncomfortable, as this, well, whatever or whomever it was just stood there, staring and swaying. 
I tapped my girlfriend on the shoulder and pointed. She saw it too. She even tried to snap a picture off. But before she could, this thing moved back and seemed to almost fade into the th thick, dark trees and bushes. I did not see it clearly, but it was tall, very tall. A good guess would be at least eight feet tall, and pitch black in color, or at least it is in the dark shade of the woods. Freaking out. We were literally freaking out. I had to call my girlfriend down as she seemed to all of a sudden become panic-stricken on top of it all. The moment she calmed down, though, we decided to head back and straight for the car. It was now about a mile and a half away at that point. It was not long, maybe about 50 yards or so, I noticed a tall dark figure was just ahead of us to the left. This time, however, I could see that it was not a person. It was something I thought was a legend around here, a Bigfoot, the Bone River Stickman to be exact. Even as a shadow, the massive thing you could tell was not a human being, not even close. We froze in our tracks and decided which way to go. It seemed that if we went forward, the trail would bend around closer into the woods, closer to this this monster following us. No, stalking us, it felt more like. We decided to step out into the edge of the open field and walk there, hoping that this thing, the Bigfoot, would not want to venture out into the open, and if possible, and get a visual of her parents and flag them down. <coughs> We could not see hide nor hair of them upon the first look around, so we kept moving forward, as much as she wanted to get a picture of this thing shadowing us. However, I suggest that we just get to the car as fast as possible and without yelling for help at that point either. <clears throat> at one point, about a minute or so into being in the open, I suggested we start running. That was a bad idea. The second we started running was the same second that all of a sudden this monster started thrashing about and seemed to be charging us. It never made it close to the edge of the tree line, but it was loud and scary enough to have us finding ourselves on bended knee holding each other. It stopped, however, <clears throat> and made kind of a growl right after it did, a deep, guttural growl I hoped to never hear again. Now we were really freaking out, completely afraid. We finally gathered ourselves together, stood up, started walking, slowly. It followed us, and from time to time, when I glanced over, I could see it. It would get ahead of us a bit, stop, and stare from the dark, all the while swaying back and forth. We were now about a mile away from the car when the clicking or clacking started up again. Then, all of a sudden, a rock about the size of a golf ball landed by my girlfriend's feet. It threw a rock at us. Stick man and stones will break my... We were both feeling threatened by this point. I was still praying under my breath, and because of that I believe I started feeling as though we were going to be just fine, as long as we were quiet and just kept walking slowly out of there. I whispered the thoughts and beliefs to my girlfriend, and she even admitted she felt the same way. We should just keep quiet and walk on. It was crazy, but every thirty to forty feet or so, I could suddenly see the tall, dark shadow of that Bigfoot standing just far and away enough under the canopy of the trees from which I could only make out its shape and size. It would not be until the last minute or so of our frightening trek back to the car that we could see the stick man for the one and only time in our lives. We kept walking at the same pace and kept the chatting to a low but normal chatting volume, something that would seem natural and hopefully show that we were not truly afraid, although I felt scared out of my mind. A rock here and there continued to be thrown near us, not hitting us, but close enough to keep our attention, I supposed. Eventually we could hear the cracking and breaking of limbs we guessed them to be, and of course the figure would appear just ahead of us in the darkness of the forest. Heaven sent. Tall, chocolate brown, and the most frightening eyes I had had and have ever seen. We rounded the last bend and noticed her parents standing at, uh, next to the car. And that is when I looked over and sticking out halfway from behind a tree in the full light of late afternoon or early evening, the Bone River stick man could be seen plain as day. We looked at it and marveled at something that apparently made it into the ark and has been one of the many creatures that still, to this day, remains extremely elusive and even reclusive, for the most part. 
It was chocolate brown with a face that was not quite human, but more apish with a very heavy brown line. The eyes were not reddish as some have reportedly uh, noticed. All we could see was pitch black, just dark inset, but big black eyes. But at that time of day, there was still little light. It was hairy. The hair seemed to be at least a couple inches long, and the mouth was a slit not covered in any hair. Looking back at the Patterson-Gimlin film today, I would say that was rather spot on, except the hair was long. You could not tell that in the film with Patty. It seemed to have a menacing look about it, but other than being a menace to us, that was all it seemed to be, a menace, nothing more, nothing less. Maybe, possibly, it just wanted us out of the woods. Thanks. Joshua.